my friends. Welcome to the Markham Board of Trade's 2017 meeting. Business leaders like you are charting the course for Markham's future. And it's clear you're doing a fine job. People from all over the world come here to study, work, and live. They choose Markham, and why wouldn't they? This is a forward-looking city and always has been. There's a reason many major companies, IBM, Lenovo, and Toshiba, to name a few, have their Canadian headquarters here. And why so many promising entrepreneurs have decided to call Markham home. In a time of rapid technological change, you've become one of Canada's most high-tech cities. You're also championing initiatives like Green Markham and leading the way in the fight against climate change. I congratulate you for your entrepreneurship and for always looking ahead. Alors que nous marquons les 150 ans du Canada, nous célébrons les villes comme Markham. Je vous souhaite une rencontre productive et motivante. Merci. Hi, it's Elizabeth May, leader of the Green Party of Canada. And hey, Frank, uh, your worship, thank you for inviting me to prepare a short video to commend your leadership in Markham. Uh, your community is showing the way on climate action. And as I was saying at the Federation of Canadian Municipalities gathering in Ottawa, when you look at the response to the very irresponsible announcement that Donald Trump made to claim that the U.S. was leaving the Paris Agreement, you look and see the response and the leadership is coming from cities, sub-national levels of government, but in the U.S. it was particularly striking that the mayor of Pittsburgh stepped up and said, well, although President Trump has said he was elected by Pittsburgh and not Paris, Pittsburgh is going to implement the Paris Agreement. We're not going offside. And so has Houston, Texas, and so is New York, and so is Los Angeles, and so has Markham. Cities around the world have made a pact to deliver on climate action, and they are discovering, as Markham is doing, that it makes good business sense, it makes for a better economy locally, it saves municipalities money, and it saves energy. So I just want to thank you for giving me a chance to say congratulations for the work you're doing. I commend you, and I appreciate your leadership. Well, thank you very much, Elizabeth May. Thank you for those kind comments. And thank you to the Right Honourable Justin Trudeau. And ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this year's Markham Board of Trade Annual Mayor's Luncheon. And I want to welcome you all. You know, in the 1960s, the world population was 3 billion people. It's now 7 billion. And in 50 years, when Canada celebrates its 200th birthday, the world population will exceed 10 billion. A world population that will exceed, that will consume resources faster than we can replace them. That cannot continue. That's not sustainable. How can we create a more sustainable world? A world where we use resources without harming the next generation. In Markham, we are addressing the challenges of sustainability in our planning, in our development, and in our social programs. We want a city that everyone can enjoy, but not at the expense of future generations. In our city, we're Green Markham. And as we celebrate Canada's 150th anniversary, we're making Green Markham even better and even more sustainable. In Green Markham, our urban forest is very important. So back in 2007, we launched our Trees for Tomorrow campaign. It's been a huge success. And as we celebrate that program's 10th anniversary, I'm proud to say that our entire community has planted 350,000 trees. That's one tree for almost every resident. Our goal is to ultimately achieve 30% forest cover in our community. In Green Markham, we strive to live in harmony with nature. Markham has been at the forefront working with other levels of government to create Canada's first national urban park. The Rouge Park is one of the largest urban parks in the world. 
at almost 20,000 acres stretching from Lake Ontario all the way up to the Oak Ridges Moraine. It's 19 times larger than Stanley Park in Vancouver and 23 times larger than Central Park in New York City. Our pathway system is a wonderful way to connect to the parks and open spaces in our community. Green Markham has more than 22 kilometers of scenic pathways. That means walkers, joggers, cyclists can enjoy moving through some of the most beautiful areas in all of Markham. The natural open spaces in our community include our woodlots, the ravines, and valleys. And by maintaining our parks and green spaces, we promote active and healthy lifestyles in our community. In fact, Green Markham is working with York Region and the Government of Ontario to build a 120 kilometer system stretching all the way from Lake Ontario up to Lake Simcoe. In Green Markham, we took the initiative to become Canada's first monarch butterfly friendly city. Now you know, many people are actually amazed that Many people are, are actually amazed that 75% of our food depends on pollinators like bees and the monarch butterflies. The population of pollinators is rapidly declining. Scientists estimate that the population of the monarch butterflies has decreased by more than 80% since the 1990s. This has alarming implications for food production. Green Markham is also committed to increasing the population of monarch butterflies and other pollinators. In Green Markham, I'm very proud to say that residents in this community are diverting 81% of our waste away from landfill. Our neighbors to the south in the city of Toronto divert 52%. And among diversion rate, our diversion rate is the best in Canada, the best in North America, and even getting better. Now when we plateaued at about 70%, we were looking at ways to do things better. And you know what? It wasn't science, it wasn't regulation, it wasn't magic. It was clear plastic bags. So now, there is no place to hide. And Peter Mason, I never realized you liked Dad's cookies so much. <laughs> I drove by your house the other day. Um, <laughs> I want to say thanks to Peter <laughs> and all the residents, because now as a community, we're diverting 81%. Green Markham has achieved another first in Canada, in North America, and perhaps the world. It's our new textile recycling program. And just to give you some context, one pair of jeans takes about 15,000 liters of water to produce. 85% of our textiles are never reused or recycled. And in the city of Markham, that represents 4,500 tons of textile waste that could be diverted from landfill each year. Our innovative program has already been recognized by the Canadian Association of Municipal Administrators. So now, in the city of Markham, we don't mind taking the shirt off your back, <laughs> as long as you're finished using it. Green Markham means energy optimization. Our rooftop solar portfolio produces two megawatts of electricity one of the largest of any municipality in Ontario. Our solar output, combined with our energy conservation, saves Markham taxpayers about $1.5 million per year. And in Green Markham, I can tell you that we are part of the electric car revolution. In the next few weeks, we'll be launching an electric vehicle workplace charging station that will actually see 
16 chargers installed at the Markham Civic Center, making it a whole lot easier for people to choose electric cars. And at night, I hope you've noticed, Green Markham literally takes on a new light. Nearly 60% of our city street lights have been converted from traditional lights to the natural white light produced by LED lighting. LED street lighting provides a softer light source with better visibility for both our pedestrians and motorists. Again, historically, we spent about $3.5 million each year in energy and maintenance for street lighting. Now, these costs will be dramatically reduced and LED lights last 20 years compared to five years with the traditional street lights. And the good news is they also reduce light pollution significantly. Green Markham is also good for business. And I think many of you in the room know that. In 2008, Markham established its lead building standard. Green development is better for employees and it's better for your customers. Green buildings are healthier, more efficient, and better for all. Green buildings in Markham include the Honeywell Building, the Aviva Tower, the Remington Downtown Center, our own Markham Pan Am Center, and the state-of-the-art Markham Stovall Hospital. These are all built to lead standard, reducing the carbon footprint of Green Markham. Now, our green journey to date has already earned the city of Markham 24 sustainability awards, and we thank all of business and all of residents for helping us achieve that. <laughs> we ultimately want Markham to be a net zero community. That means for water, waste, energy, and emissions by 2050. Our goal is both ambitious and achievable. Green Markham also means growing our economic prosperity. It means exciting, leading edge, environmental research and innovation. One such company right here in the city of Markham is Pond Technologies. It has the potential to be a game changer, not only here at home, but around the world. We're strong supporters of Pond, and we're connecting them to our own Markham District Energy to, caption, to capture the carbon dioxide. This project demonstrates how Pond Technology fights climate change. Pond Technologies uses algae to mitigate smokestack emissions from large vinyl emitters. Algae is a plant that uses photosynthesis to turn the noxious chemicals that we find in smokestacks into something that's quite literally green. Pond located in Markham because it's a high technology company that needs access to other high technology companies. These include electronic manufacturers. We make our own boards right here within a stone's throw of this office. We also do heavy equipment manufacturing, again, within a stone's throw of this office. It's one of the few geographies that affords us the opportunity to do anything we need within a close, limited geography of where we're standing. We've already changed the world. We've changed the dialogue from one of pollution as inevitable and looking for ways to sort of reduce the output. We're finding ways to use the output as an input to another system. We can manufacture a variety of very valuable products from pollution. We're closing the carbon loop and we're gonna change the world by making this technology available to all large final emitters. Right here in Markham, I think it's an amazing story. So Green Markham means an exciting future with futuristic cars. GM has established their research center right here in the city of Markham. This facility will create 1,000 new software engineering jobs focusing on enhancing the driver experience, including technologies for the autonomous vehicle. General Motors chose Markham because innovation lives here. We are home to a highly trained workforce and we have proven success in the global marketplace. Well, we located our newest campus in Markham because Markham is the high-tech capital of Canada and is part of over 4,000 ICT firms in York Region. 
Our Markham campus gives us proximity to a thriving and vibrant metropolis like Toronto, giving us access to top talent as well as world-class research institutions. Last year, GM announced that it would be investing to expand our engineering base to approximately 1,000 positions, as well as open a brand new state-of-the-art technology center right here in Markham. We are actively and aggressively hiring to that mandate now. We're at about 150 engineers and onboarding new hires every single week. Please welcome Brian Tawson, GM's Director of Canadian Engineering. Hey Brian, how you doing? Welcome. Thank you. Have a seat. And um, first of all, thank you for coming to Markham. And, Thanks for uh, having us. This is great. I mean, Brian uh, certainly works for GM. He's part of what's happening over at the old American Express building. But the nice thing is, he also lives in the city of Markham. So he knows this community, and he's part of that incredible talent that we have here. So uh, I know that everybody starts off here. So I'm going to start off here, because I know you're doing a lot more than this. But what is the future of autonomous vehicles? Yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a great question, one that's being asked all the time right now. And I think it's because it's such an exciting time in, in the transportation industry. Our, our, uh, our uh, CEO and, and Chairman Mary Barr always says that we're expecting more change in the next five years than, than we will in the next 50. And I think a big part of this is this idea of, of driverless cars and autonomous uh, technology. Um, I think one of the, the, the key cornerstone tenants of, 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 uh, of the benefits of autonomous, as we kind of see it, is, is a lot of the safety that that's going to bring. Um, if you take a look at some of the statistics right now in North America, there's something like over uh, 30,000 type accidents that occur every year, and a lot of those are driver errors. So when you're able to bring technology to bear, we think that's going to create a safer environment, safer type of um, uh, driving situations that really will enhance sort of the societal benefit. And then in terms of kind of what's that look like and, and, and how it's all developing, uh, a lot of that's around the te technology development itself and sort of the cornerstones of it. So if you take a look at GM, uh, for instance, um, developing a lot of new active safety features, whether they be uh, forward collision alerts or our new super cruise feature, which is coming later this year, um, these really act as sort of the building blocks to be able to create um, an autonomous future. So it's, it's probably sooner than a lot of people think, but there's still a lot of work to be done, and it's very, very cutting edge. I'm very excited about what that looks like. So I mentioned that you're going to bring ultimately a thousand software uh, jobs here to the city of Markham. Just what type of engineering mm -hmm. are you going to be involved in? Yeah, so our, our Markham Center, we're, we're still building that right now. It's going to be a state-of-the-art center. We're going to be housing engineers um, to really work on these main key areas. The first is are next generation infotainment systems. When you think about an in-car experience and the ability to bring customers' digital lives into the vehicle, these infotainment systems really serve as that connectivity platform. And I think that's really, really powerful um, you know, in terms of the ability to provide new benefits, new innovations, new experiences for the customer beyond just getting from A to B in terms of the transportation. So a lot of that next generation infotainment work is happening right here. On top of that, we talked a little bit about a lot of the active safety features and new vehicle dynamic control systems coming in. So the ability to have um, you know, advanced cruise control systems, forward collision alert systems, side blind zone detections, on and on, and all culminating, culminating into something like Super Cruise coming this year, which is essentially hands-free free driving on limited highway conditions. That's also being developed um, here in our Markham Center. And then finally, of course, autonomous. And um, you know, our focus right now as we're continuing to build and staff up is around a lot of the software and uh, controls for our, our uh, autonomous systems moving forward. Well, Brian, I hope after we've watched all the info stuff on, in the new cars, there'll also be a chance for us to be able to sleep in those cars. I know <laughs> council will prefer they'd rather sleep in the autonomous car than at council meetings. So you're going to help our productivity okay. as well. well. Ladies and gentlemen, Brian Tossin, thank you very much. GM Motors, thank you. Thank you. Appreciate, Appreciate it. it. Thank you. Again. I just want to tell you, too, that GM is not the only investment that we've seen in the city of Markham. Each hour of every day, Markham enjoys $100,000 of private investment. That's $100,000 
each hour of every day. And as a growing financial center, Markham's relationship with TD has reached new heights. TD is a, lay, a leading player in the financial sector with more than 74,000 employees in offices around the world. And TD Insurance is its latest investment here in the city of Markham. And they will be adding 1,000 people to its local footprint. TD now is our second largest employer in the city of Markham. With, yeah, it's, uh, it's quite amazing. Thank you, TD, for being here. They have more than 4,000 full-time jobs in the city of Markham. TD is a major auto insurer, and Markham is a leader for advanced auto sales and innovation. And I'm very pleased that we will soon be welcoming PAF Porsche to Markham. Porsche, because it's an aspirational brand, there's a lot of pressure on them to continue to produce cars and trucks that kind of meet their standards. With Porsche, those cars will never go to driverless, but there could be an appetite to go there for maybe the same customer, but different car, different use. The average Porsche customer has at least five other cars in their stable, we'll call it. So I think that your average Porsche customer will still have a driverless car in their fleet, but I don't think it's gonna be the actual Porsche. <laughs> I think we should have put a little disclaimer, please do not try this at home. I don't know, well. Green Markham resonates across the country, and for Canada to reach its full economic potential, we need to compete internationally with new ideas, with new products, and with new services. Venture Lab, our regional innovation center, is better positioned today because of its recent move to IBM's Canadian headquarters here in the city of Markham. I believe that we've created the right environment for Markham's startups and medium-sized businesses. They're gonna have the ability to rub shoulders with big business with strategic partners, and with venture capitalists. This means more innovation, more opportunities, more jobs, and certainly more economic prosperity. Our locally grown companies now have access to the world stage. And please welcome to our stage, Jeremy Lauren, CEO of Venture Lab. Welcome, Jeremy. Well, Jeremy, I know that this crowd uh, certainly is impressed, those that have interacted with you, but I'm going to ask on their behalf, what have you done for us lately? <laughs> <laughs> Thanks for asking, Mr. Mayor, and I'll say I have no business being on this stage with you, sir, but I'm going to take it. I'm very honored to be here and to have an opportunity to share with our crowd what's going on. Uh, Venture Labs had an unbelievable first five years here in Markham. We uh, were launched into the Ontario Network of Entrepreneurs in uh, February of 2011. And what a ride we've been on in partnership with the city of Markham in the creation of the Markham Convergence Center and everything that that brand has uh, become known uh, for, for innovators, entrepreneurs, startups, and now scale-up companies, companies like Pond Technologies. So we, we started Venture Lab. It was housed in the Markham Convergence Center, and, and I thank Council for, for their support, this one and the past, for the money we put in. Now you've moved into IBM's headquarters. What's that meant for Venture Lab? Yeah, what an honor. Uh, you know, engagement with large multinationals uh, is critical to early stage companies. It's often the missing link. And what first attracted me as a citizen and resident to Markham was the just awe-inspiring um, large multinational cluster that's here. And so we really worked hard over the first five years to say, you know, if we can create a vibrant innovation startup community, that's going to be really interesting and ultimately valuable to the large multinationals. The next trick in, in sort of the next five years of our evolution is how we bring them closer together because, you know, when the big guys and the little guys co-mingle together, really special things start to happen in our local community. So I, I know recently you introduced uh, Venture Lab 2.0. What is that exactly? <laughs> yes, yeah, so thank you for asking. 
uh, it started out as a funny internal statement. You know, we're, we're all tech geeks. We all work with tech entrepreneurs, and it's often a way to, uh, you know, work through different software iterations are often coded and numbered. And so we thought about, you know, our first five years of business being 1.0 and what might 2.0 actually be. And uh, very quickly, something that was really just an internal conversation became something that we could be quite outward and public about. And, and all it really means, Mr. Mayor, is an opportunity to organize Venture Lab as a business, as an organization, in a way to harness and, and take control of this awesome opportunity that we have now in partnership with the city, uh, as well as IBM Canada, to build a world-class innovation space here in Markham, and one that everybody in this room and everybody in our community can be very, very proud of. That's really what Venture Lab 2.0 means. Well, you know, I, I just want to say thank you for the work that you, the board of directors, and, and certainly the staff at, at Venture Lab have been able to accomplish. Uh, I know it's part of a, an innovation network across the province of Ontario, but you're a bit humble about this. Uh, in terms of output, we have the best, I think, output per square foot in Venture Lab compared to all the rest of the innovation centers in the province of Ontario. And so given that, what's the future economy, how will the future economy really rely on startups and the uh, great talent that we've managed to attract to Markham? I think it's, a, thank you very much, um, that's very kind. I think it's a, it's a number of things. I think that our large multinationals that are being highlighted here today that are being attracted to Markham, they certainly benefit. Uh, just as much as our startup community does. The, the, the issue with our startups and our scale-ups often is just brand identity. They, they don't, uh, their brands aren't known yet by the broader community where our large multinationals, of course, are. And when we all band together as a collective ecosystem, you know, we, we always say it takes a village to raise an entrepreneur. When everybody leans in, grabs an oar, and rows together, we build brand visibility for our great city here in Markham, certainly for the region, and, and, and the game we're in is, is, a, is a provincial one. We want to make Ontario world-class as it's recognized around the world, but we want to shine a bright light on what we're doing here in Markham. So connected to a broader provincial ecosystem, I think, is a really important part of the overall value proposition as well. Well, Jeremy, thank you for being here today. Your time is up. We want you to get out there and create more innovation in this community. <laughs> thank pleasure. you, Jeremy. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank, you. thank you. Green Markham needs a sustainable and vibrant downtown, a walkable center of business, culture, and entertainment. Markham Center is our crown jewel, and I have to tell you, it's admired by many other municipalities. It will be home to 40,000 residents, and another 40,000 people will come here to work. Our newest addition to Markham Centre is Aviva Canada. Aviva will shortly be bringing 1,500 employees to Markham. The company is Canada's second largest general insurer, and I can tell you that we're very excited to welcome the Aviva employees to our wonderful city. Let's give them a big hand. But Aviva is among many companies that chose the city of Markham. I think the single biggest advantage that Markham has is their ease of doing business. Our experience is that when you talk to the people in Markham about relocating or moving a business here, they just make your life so easy in terms of making that happen. We've invested about $100 million in our location here. We've got roughly 800 associates that come to work here each and every day. It really has justified in our minds why the move to Markham has been absolutely the best thing that we could have done for Honda in Canada. Honda is an excellent, an excellent example of how the city of Markham works with business to meet their needs. And today, I want to welcome Barry Holt, the Executive Pri Vice President and COO of Honda Canada. Welcome, Barry. So, Barry, we did hear why you chose Markham, and yes, I've did. met you a few times yep. since you've moved in. Uh, I want to dig a little deeper. Sure. I mean, you chose Markham for a lot of reasons, uh, and I know that you're very proud to be here. We are. W why the decision to come to Markham? Uh, I, I will uh, t give two thoughts to that. Uh, I'll be honest with you, uh, from my perspective, fate had something to do with it. 
Uh, we needed some help. We had a few hiccups in trying to move into the York region with another municipality. Uh, we came here. Uh, the Rice Group was instrumental in putting us together. Uh, you talked earlier about sustainability. Once we put what we wanted on the table, uh, Markham put what it wanted on the table, and guess what? Things started to mesh together. The puzzle pieces were, uh, were there. Um, uh, I, Dave mentioned in the, uh, in the video the collaboration, ease of doing business. And I think one of the most important things, uh, Mayor, was, was everybody just had a chance to listen to the other side and realize that sustainability works for everybody. Well, I just want to say uh, we were very pleased that Honda came. And most times when, when an applicant comes before us, we always have to push a few Correct. extra buttons to say, why aren't you doing this? Why aren't you doing that? And I'll tell you, we were very impressed when you came in with your site plan approval because you had more than we ever expected. And if anyone hasn't had a chance, I don't know if you give tours, but you should be giving tours at Honda Canada for all the sustainability features you've incorporated uh, into that Apparently site. I've got a homework item to do. So. Okay, so that's your job. <laughs> uh, Barry, I know that you know this already, and I, and I want to let our audience know as well that later this year, mm -hmm. uh, the city of Markham will be leading a business mission to right. Japan. Uh, I want to get some travel tips from you <laughs> if I can before we head out. Um, well, he, I've got two uh, things, I think. Um, uh, you know us a little bit. We've been here for seven years now, so you're getting to know Honda and the Japanese culture, the philosophies through Canadian eyes, let's say. Um, you have an open invitation for your delegation to join us at uh, uh, Honda's uh, uh, global headquarters in Tokyo. Uh, we have a variety of other unique uh, facilities that you can uh, hopefully uh, get to as well. And I think what you'll learn there, uh, uh, take away, uh, I'm pretty confident you'll take away, is that Honda is a company that uh, wants to ensure that we improve people's daily lives through advanced technology. Um, we're not just a car company. We're not just about electrification and hydrogen ideas. There's many, many, many more opportunities ahead. So I'm pretty confident that you'll be able to get to see that. Uh, I think more importantly than that, though, if I had any advice for you at all, I encourage you to um, uh, experience the cultural uh, events that are there. Uh, learn about Japanese society, the resiliency of the people, the philosophies that they uh, have, and, and that will give you uh, what you need to understand whatever future possibilities uh, go with, uh, uh, with the uh, city of Markham. I hope, and we'll tr we're trying, I promise, that you might be able to meet Asimo while you're over there. I hope. For those that don't know, Asimo is the most humanoid robot in the world, <laughs> and it will be an experience second to none. So we'll try. Well, I'm looking forward to that. You're here because you chose Markham. You're here because you've got an incredible sustainable uh, site up there at the Honda headquarters. And uh, I know about a couple of things that you're working on, and my suspicion is that you'll be back here again to talk about some we great advancement so. when it comes to Honda Canada. We certainly hope so. Thank you, Barry, Thank for being you. part of our Thank community you. and keep Thank up you. the great work. Thank, Thank you. you. Green Markham means constantly embracing new opportunities. And we are pleased to announce that York University will be starting construction next year, right here in the city of Markham. And I want to say thank you to, to Bud Purvis, the uh, president of the York University Development Corporation, of course, the entire team at York University. The first phase of the university will have 4,000 students and that will ultimately grow to 20,000. And in the next few weeks, York is opening its brand new Innovation Center right across from the Aviva Tower. The Innovation Center is unique. It will introduce high school students to the world of entrepreneurship and innovation. And I want to give a very warm welcome to someone who's going to lead York and the new campus here in the city of Markham, Please welcome President-Elect and Vice-Chancellor of York University, Dr. Rhonda Lenton, on stage. <laughs> welcome. Congratulations. Welcome. Thank you, Mayor. <laughs> Have a seat. So uh, I just told everybody that uh, the campus is going to start. Uh, you've got an entourage. <laughs> um, 
I, you just said that construction is going to start uh, next year. Uh, I know the question that I get asked a lot, not so much about when it's going to start. When are the doors going to open up at York? Well, thank you for that question. We fully expect that the doors will be opening in September 2021. All right. <laughs> and um, if I could just say that, you know, it obviously takes a bit of time to grow a campus to size. But uh, we're hoping that when we open the doors, we're expecting to have at least 20 degree programs. So it's going to be comprehensive in scope. And that over the first five years or so, we'll grow to 4,500 undergraduate and graduate students. And we like to refer to that as phase one. Well, and uh, I also talked about the Innovation Center, which will open up in, in a few weeks. And this is different from the other centers that we already have in the city of Markham. Tell us what's different about this one. About the campus or the Innovation, innovation Center? Innovation Center. The Innovation Center. Well, I think it's very important to know that York is really developing a very comprehensive innovation strategy for the entire university. And so this is a very important addition to that overall strategy. And the focus of the Innovation Center that we're thinking about landing on in terms of York University Discovery Hub it's going to be committed to not only innovation, but also to community engagement, how we think about partnering with all of you that are in Markham and how we are drawing in employers and businesses to work with our faculty, our students, but also even connecting our university students as well to high school students so that we can start at the youngest ages of possible of having people think about ideas and how to incubate those ideas, not only technological innovation, but social innovation, coming together to solve problems. And we really want this Discovery Hub to be open doors to attract the community in because a, a defining feature of what we want at York is to really have a very distinguished approach to how we think about partnership. And that this innovation hub is really going to be promoting that new design of partnership. Well, I know York has been eager, and I think the fact that you've stepped forward with this investment well in advance of when the doors do open for the new campus. So that's the Innovation Center. Uh, tell us about the new campus. How is this new campus going to be different from any of the other campuses that you have? You know, I, I feel I should start off by saying that in some respects, some things will be the same. You know, this is an extension of York University. We have Glendon Campus, so we are a multi-campus university. And we are committed to bringing together access, connectedness with the community, excellence, and impact. So in that respect, it'll be the same. But as a brand new campus, and one that's going to grow over time. It's an incredible opportunity to utilize this campus itself as an incubator of innovation that can benefit not only the students at Markham and Markham and York Region um, more broadly, but can even be scaled back and scaled up to York University as a whole. So the, the whole nature of the leveraging and working together with partners in Markham is going to be a defining feature for the university. You know, York University has five years in a row been a, the, one of the top Canada's green employers. This campus will uh, follow in that suit. The classrooms, the, the way in which we're going to use technology, it's going to be flipped classrooms, open space, one-stop shopping um, for students. So we're uh, very excited about uh, the new campus, how it's going to be integrated, how we're going to partner with all of you to leverage together all of the resources that we have. So it's going to be an exciting, dynamic campus uh, where we're going to be working closely with our Seneca College partner. And we're incredibly excited to be working with Markham and contributing to the development, the amazing things that are happening in Markham. Well, we're excited. You're eager. We're eager. You're so eager. <laughs> These are students that could potentially be part of the first graduating class at the new campus at York right here in the city of Markham. Thank you, Dr. Lenton. Thank you. We welcome York to Markham. Thank you. Well, thank you very much. Well, I can't think of a, a better way to inspire future generations than by celebrating Canada's 150th birthday. We will be hosting Markham's biggest Canada Day celebration. And over the course of the summer, we'll also be having exhibitions at the Varley Art Gallery and the Markham Museum. 
And we'll also have many community-inspired neighborhood celebrations right across the city. And then we're going to cap it off with a great celebration in September called Markham Expo 150, showcasing Markham's art and culture, sports and business, all in the spirit of the Canadian identity. And I can tell you that Markham is expecting guests from around the world, from Europe, China, and from our great friends south of the border in the United States. Markham's motto is leading while remembering. And we're going to continue to respect our past. Acknowledging our history strengthens the sense of identity that we have as a community. Markham will do that with three commemorative monuments this year our residents are going to pay special tribute to our veterans, those who made the ultimate sacrifice for Canada's freedom. To them, we dedicate Veterans Square in Markham Village, and we honour the veterans who made such a great sacrifice for our country. A statue of Benjamin Thorne, the founder of Thornhill, will be prominently placed at the entrance of the Thornhill Community Centre. Thorne became a very successful businessman, and by the 1840s, his company was Upper Canada's largest exporter of flour. His post office put the name Thornhill on the map. And thanks to Benjamin Thorne, we have a vibrant community that showcases our history. And lastly, we're going to unveil a statue of William Bursey an extraordinary individual who brought with him 70 families from Germany through the United States to right here in the city of Markham. This September, we will commemorate the Bursey statue together with a delegation from Germany and the Markham Historical Society. It's located at the northeast corner of Kennedy Road and 16th Avenue and it will be the centerpiece of Bursey Square. Our reputation as Canada's high-tech capital allows us to attract innovative, high-tech pioneers. Pioneers who embrace our heritage while shaping Markham's future. While remembering our past in this year of national celebration, Markham is strengthening its bond with Canada's First Nations community. A new community in the southeast part of Markham will be called Ani. Ani in Ojibwe means welcome. Markham is proud that we forged a new partnership with the Yabatum First Nations community. At its core, it's about building a meaningful relationship between two communities, including our youth, our seniors, and our entrepreneurs. We are fortunate to live in this great country, to be part of a vibrant and diverse city. We are all part of this great country. First Nations, families who've lived here for generations, or families who've just arrived from other lands. We are blessed to be part of the greatest country in the world. The faces, The faces, traditions, and talents of all Canadians have made this great country the beautiful country that it is today. The world needs leadership that serves humanity. Canada and communities like Markham can make it all happen. Each and every one of us we have the responsibility to improve the world. And I know that Green Markham will keep making our home a more sustainable home. Our shared talents, knowledge, skills, and most importantly, generous hearts will help us heal the world. This is what makes me proud of our community. We all stand proud as Canadians celebrating our nation's 150th birthday.
That's wonderful. Well done. And you guys were amazing. Thank you. Mountain higher 